before we did that. Right. Yeah, I'll hand over. Oh, now recording. So, hello and welcome uh, to everyone for this Four Women, Four Decades conversation about letting ourselves go. And uh, it's myself and Rachel hosting this conversation this evening. And uh, we have lots to share. Um, we, may, uh, we may take us up to the hour, um, but we'll, we'll see how things go time-wise. The chat is closed at the moment, but we're as normal we'll kind of open it up halfway through or something and uh, at that point let you know that it's open because it's always lovely to get your get your ideas of what you would like to share and any questions you'd like us to cover. Um, I, I guess I wanted to start off this evening by sharing where the topic for this evening's conversation came from and uh, it all started actually with an observation that Rachel made around, um, you know, during this time, it's been really nice to enjoy comfortable clothes um, more and more. And, and actually she'd seen a lovely pair of trousers she wanted to buy and uh, happened to notice it had an elasticated waist. And, um, and, and the thought occurred to her that if she was to purchase an elasticated waist, that would mean she was letting herself go or other, judgments around that and it sparked such a wonderful conversation between the four of us around the ideas we make up about um what what comfortable clothes mean like and why on earth would we not choose comfort at every minute second an opportunity and 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 yet we we put ourselves in restrictive clothing, don't we? And, and, and I was having a giggle with Rachel just before the call because literally I see this in myself. Like I have, um, working from home, really enjoyed comfortable trousers. And very often I'll be in smart, a smart top half for my business calls, but like, you know, happily wearing my tracksuit bombs. But I have this little... It's almost like a dance that happens throughout the day where I then change into my jeans if I'm going out. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's doing this. So, so through the day, I'm like switching what, <laughs> switching what I'm wearing. Um, and, and, you know, sort of choosing comfort for home and then something which I guess I, I'm deeming people will see as more presentable when I'm outside. So, so anyway, the dictionary says of letting ourselves go, one of the definitions is to allow yourself to become less attractive or healthy. And we really like the idea of flipping this and trying to look at letting ourselves go as something aspirational. And if that was the case, what would that mean? And um, the analogy came to mind for me of, of this like kind of closed fist versus open palm. Like it's the same hand, all, albeit left and right, but, um, but you know, here we have something that is kind of um, feels restrictive or tight um, and not expansive. Um, uh, uh, and here this is so kind of like more freedom and a spaciousness and unfurling uh, and imagine if part of this conversation about letting ourselves go is like the difference here like what if we're walking around like tight fists and we don't even know it <laughs> what if we're what if this open palm is available to us but we wouldn't know where to start going for it and wouldn't it be nice to raise a generation of sons and daughters that are more like the open palm than tight fists, if that is going on? And, um, and so that's the topic of our conversation this evening. And um, I was inspired as a result of this topic to uh, write a little poem. And I don't often write poems. <laughs> um, 
but I wanted to share it to kind of kick us off because I think it shares some of the ideas that come to mind for me of what letting ourselves go in the aspirational context could look like. She let herself go and let go of stale old ideas that didn't suit her anymore. She let herself go and moved towards a freer, more expansive experience of life. She let herself go, breaking free of the chains that kept her playing small. She let herself go and opened her heart to all the feelings of the rainbow. She let herself go and spoke her truth and cared less for the opinions of others. She let herself go and gave permission for others to do the same. <sighs> wow. Thank you, Natalie. I think I speak for the many smiles on the call when I say that is awesome um, and a really helpful frame. It was a really helpful frame for all four of us to start playing with this idea and also noticing, and the, the clothing is one example, right? But noticing how many, in how many areas out of our lives are we not paying attention to what we want, what we need, and we're just simply going along with what's expected what was written by somebody else for us to conform to. And it's been really interesting as a four to keep returning to the motivation behind what we're doing, why we're doing what we're doing, why I need jeans on for the school run, but not to answer my front door. Why, if I'm running a program, if I'm with clients, if I'm working from nine till five or whatever my hours are, why I need to be in restrictive clothing that looks a certain way, that looks corporate versus being able to allow my body to move as I probably and most likely inhale a lunch, which means that my body is naturally going to just change as I eat most things available in front of me. Why do we hold ourselves to these standards that in almost all cases, somebody else wrote for us? Um, and so when I was thinking about this, and obviously Natalie's poem just, just really inspired the four of us to think more about what we aspire to. It's this idea of, for me anyway, letting go of your or anybody else's expectations um, for me, of me. Um, and I noticed only today that, you know, I let myself go and no longer relied on anything or anyone. Um, that's been my learning this afternoon as I've been reflecting on this. It's like, wow, to, to truly, truly trust ourselves and our um, sense that we, that I would know more than anybody else in my world, I would know what's best for me, um, what my path should be, what my direction should be. Why would I consult, unless it's with people whose opinions I really care about or who love me dearly or who want to champion, sponsor me, raise me, why would I consult with or worry about anybody else's thoughts around where I'm heading? And the quote we shared, you know, in the, um, in the email that came out and in some of our social media was what the world needs is more women who have quit fearing themselves and started trusting themselves. What the world needs is massive masses of women who are entirely out of control. And we use Glenn Doyle all the time to remember this point, which is gosh, if we all did that, if we all stopped this, um, well, for me, anyway, this kind of consultation process I go through in terms of what decisions am I making are the best ones? Oh, my gosh. It's like a game show. What should Rach do next? If I stop and when I stop that and, and believe me, I really have. It's so freeing and empowering just to sit in my own power and knowledge as a human being and just know and trust that I know what's best for me. Um, and it feels like a much lighter experience of life so far. anyway. Yeah, uh, I agree. So, <laughs> like, it's hard, though, isn't it? It's, it's hard to um, kind of get a sense of what's right for you. And then, you know, there is this narrative about what will people think. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a brave move to care less about that. Um, it's interesting, because I think I'm, I'm, have been on a journey and still going on a journey with this. I definitely care less about what people think now. I think I've come to the conclusion, actually, 
a lot of them don't, don't really care anyway <laughs> all the things I sort of like <laughs> would um kind of question and it wouldn't even occur to someone to think about it because you know people are generally quite wrapped up in their own stuff aren't they um, but there's definitely this thing around social norms or what are seen to be social norms um, and and yeah doing doing things that we think will fit in because you know we have a we have a human a human kind of drive to fit in and belong and if we see a certain behavior or way of being that seems that means I will fit in you know we might gravitate to that even though it doesn't really feel like it suits us and and I just love the idea of us kind of trying to follow the path that fits us like a glove that is ours and not that not that the society deems to be the way because as you said earlier on Rachel it's all someone made that up <laughs> along the line but it doesn't mean it's doesn't mean that version's right I also wonder at what point like when did we all start taking it so seriously because I'm sure you know some of the things some of the examples we've worked through and they're they've been smaller examples in our in our chat just to go you know when am I trying to conform when am I not not being um it's the opposite of truthful <laughs> God, lost all words but when am I not doing my thing and and when, what is it that's that's pushing or pulling me to to do certain things and I think so often it's just it's awareness isn't it so I, I wasn't even aware that um you know to look a certain way I was doing something or to to maybe fit in and be appropriate or look a bit similar to those women over there that I need to try and make friends with. like I wasn't even aware that I was doing stuff it just seemed well that's what that's what people do here so that's what I'll do um and I think in life I don't know whether we get tired in my case I'm pretty knackered you know I don't know whether we just stop questioning it and just go with the flow um which there's nothing wrong with that but but more and more and certainly since this poem Natalie I'm like what is it that's making me want to look sound or, or modify in any way how I'm coming across or what I'm doing and what's the reason behind that and I think when I start to look at the motivation it's changing things for me so I'm like oh so I could I could turn up on the school run nice school nice town I could turn up totally you know look like I've been dragged through a hedge and actually that's fine because I figure as long as I'm sober I'd, it'd still be fine you know I'm still doing a good job I'm still trying to raise my kids but I don't have to look a certain way to be able to be capable of dropping my children off or, you know, and I, I have certain views on this because there's things like, can you go to the supermarket in your pajamas? You know, I do have these standards where I'm like, hold on, we should be dressed to leave the house. But beyond that, you know, I just I'm questioning a lot more. What is it that's making me um, feel that way? And one of the things I said to the, um, the ladies on our call earlier this week was, you know, I still can't. I still have not. Sorry. I haven't yet spoken to a client, uh, spoke to a client on Zoom, gone on to a meeting where I'm representing myself and my own business. I still haven't been able to do that without makeup on. So I'm like, that's the next step. And it's not that I, I don't want to look nice. It's not that I don't care about what I look like, but it's more I'm only doing that because I'm concerned about or I'm interested in their perception of me. And that's starting to massively shift, which is very cool, actually, because, of course, and I know this will sound obvious, but my ability to do my job is not hampered by the fact as, you know, whether or not I'm wearing makeup. And I just forgot that for 39 years, nearly 40. But, and, and, you know, and that's fascinating. And this is where it's also kind of subjective as well, because, you know, I am, um, I mean, I suppose I don't wear much makeup anyway, but yeah, I, I'm not wearing um, makeup necessarily on calls. And I'm kind of really okay with that but then I'm wearing jeans to go out the house. So, so it, you know, so it, you know, there's things we've seen and there's things we haven't seen yet, isn't there? Um, but I love what you said about let's dig underneath because when we kind of understand the motivation underneath it, then we can kind of 
this is when we can kind of get a sense does it feel does it feel um true or is there some kind of insecurity or fear or fitting in kind of thing and i know we're just like we've kind of touching the surface on the examples of um what we wear or how we're choosing but i think so much of it is our narratives that go on that keep us you know keep us from not um necessarily just just being more fluid in what we do um yeah it's behind everything isn't it? it's behind you know how you how we make our decisions for our lives it's not just will she wear makeup it's kind of nothing to do with that but it's the small example that represents the bigger pattern for me the more I thought about it and I don't know it's just it it seems to be um the motivation behind it yes but also you know to say I'm not going to do what society expects or that I care less about what you think we talked about this earlier as well which was we actually do care I care what you think of course I care what you think and I think it's in Brene Brown's latest show and she says you know we're we're neurologically wired to care what other people think but just just make sure you don't care what everybody thinks you know I would take you know the opinions of the people on this call and really care but beyond this uh, you know choose who you're going to pay attention to and whose views and perceptions of you 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 take in and care about the rest you know that that can't all be my responsibility so be selective about who you know, you pay attention to if they're going to advise or, or point you in any direction. They need to absolutely be worthy of that and have your best interests and want to, you know, sponsor, love, look after and help you versus judge you and judge your decisions. It's a really, we've got to make that call as human beings. And I think in most cases we can. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> And more and more recently, I'm seeing this, I've kind of called it um, Marmite-ness, Marmite-ness. So for those of you who know the brand Marmite, you'll know part of their marketing campaign is you love it or you hate it. And they kind of embrace that as part of, part of their thing. And I think, you know, it's okay for us to embrace our Marmite-ness. You know, we'll have people that love us and that we love and we're drawn to them and, and, you know, there'll be others where we're just, you know, not their cup of tea. And that's okay. Like there's space in the world for all of that. And when we don't think that's on offer, our people pleaser goes on overdrive because we're trying to meet the approval of everyone. I just don't think that's a realistic expectation. And the more you get okay with having a bit of marmiteness. <laughs> That's really, it's really liberating because it means you can follow your direction that feels true to you. And, you know, the more you do that and want to play big with that, you are going to get some people that it's, it's not for them. That really is okay. It doesn't mean what you're doing isn't right. It just means it's not right for them. That's okay. That's been huge learning for me because I think I used to maybe receive a bit of criticism um, not that I don't take feedback on board, it's important, but, you know, there, there is a point where you've got to know it's all perception, right? So is that something I want to take on board? That's really, really helpful. And I think we've talked many times on this, in this forum about success and what that looks like and kind of aspirations and goals that you set for yourself and one of the things I was considering was also how, you know, if I let myself go, I would also let go of all of those goals and things that I'm shooting for. They're all future based, that are all in this present moment, almost irrelevant. And instead just hang out in a bit of gratitude and, you know, we're here and it's Wednesday evening in the UK and it's, there's, there's all of us on the call and we're, we're turning up and we're, we're not hundred percent prepared. We never are. We came to share, we're totally imperfect, we're learning. And I just think, God, just let, and just before we, you know, turn the call on, it's like, well, there's, there's, there's two of us tonight, how will this go? And, and actually, if we let ourselves go and just connect on a human level and say, this is where we are and this is where we're up to with our learning and this is what we're seeing today and this week and since we saw you last, then anything else is just 
expectation I've either put on myself or you know we've made up between the four of us and we're kind of just passing it around and actually we're just we're quite good when we just show up we're good when we show up and, and put all of that down um and just have a chat about what we're seeing about this so I've let myself go by yeah um being here as is and you know how freeing that's just that's just mm. lovely and I think you know we're doing that in this scenario and I think we can all do that more and more yeah. and it's like what Rachel said it's like what when when did it all get so serious <laughs> we yeah. are very serious yeah. does it need to be so serious you know mm. who, who, who said it needed to be um and it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't have to be um but but yeah, I, um, I think there's more to see. And I think, you know, when we carry on with these, it's almost like autopilot, isn't it? We don't question. It's like until you, discuss, until you kind of investigate something, you're just doing it and you're not even thinking about it. There'll be so many things, habits we're in because we're just doing what's expected maybe of our, you know, expectations we put on ourselves, expectations other have others have of us there's this big thing around wanting to be convenient and not inconvenience people I think that that's kind of woven in as well um and we just innocently it feels like we just innocently keep passing this baton on <laughs> and the race continues um the, and we're holding it up tight fists <laughs> um like so I so and 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 so anyway certainly for me you know it's this is not like seeing it all and it all reveals itself but it's like things come up and I think it helps because you know in our group we're, we're questioning a lot and we'll and we'll sort of see things together it's a kind of it's, it's kind of like a catalyst for insight almost in our conversations and then we'll spot something and go oh I hadn't thought of it like that before um and then it's like a drip feed almost of spotting things and then finding new ways to, ah, I can let that go. Like, for example, I used to be a huge perfectionist. I just thought it was me. I thought that was my style. I thought I was born like it. I, I didn't ever imagine a time where I wouldn't be that. Um, and you know, when I see what I see now, I see that it was it was a huge fear on my part of what I what I was doing not being good enough, like huge fear. Uh, you know, it's not to say that I don't now still have high standards because I do. You know, I pride myself on um, doing good work and showing up um, for clients in a way that's that's um, you know that's that's kind of on it but you know actually so much what I have to offer I think is so much richer because I'm not hung up by all these rules of what I think perfect ought to look like and you know that version that I had in my head was all based on what the experts around me were saying it wasn't you know it wasn't linked linked to what felt right for me it was just me trying to live up to others really and and that was really exhausting. Yeah. Natalie, what did you say today in the chat that blew my mind about shoes? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I found it a really helpful way to, to re-look at all of this and, you know, why we choose what we choose. But I wondered if you could share that. Yeah, so it was linked around decision making and, and recently the four of us, um, you might have heard us talking about following what feels warm and following our kind of heart led things as opposed to what our kind of rational logic mind might say, trying to kind of go with what feels fully aligned. And, you know, I think um, our body it's giving us like so much information all the time to help us to nudge us in helpful directions but we have our narratives of <laughs> and expectations that can get in the way and um and 
And our body's giving us feedback all the time on what's good for us and what's not. Like people reaching burnout, they know they're exhausted. They're getting so many signs, but the overdrive, I must do this, the to-do list, I, I haven't got enough time to stop, you know. It stops them listening to the exhaustion that's crying out. So anyway, the what Rachel's referring to is last night, I thought, well, like, you know, you know, when you try on a pair of shoes, it's really obvious whether they're comfortable or not. Like when you're shoe shopping, like really it's so obvious. And I thought, well, what, like, what if, what if the other decisions we, we, we need to make or want to make, what, what if we are getting those sensations, like maybe not as obvious as pain, but what, what if the feedback is working, but we're just not listening? And I don't know the answer, genuinely don't. But, but anyway. <laughs> it sparked enormous, because it was like, oh my gosh, you know, in this example, they don't fit. Even if they look nice, they're coming off my feet and going back on the shelf, because I'm just not an idiot. And then I sat with that going, but I must be a bit of an idiot because in all other areas of my life, I'm kind of not only, I'm probably just buying the shoes and buying more pairs to make sure I don't run out of the shoe. So it's like, how can I, how can we all start to listen so that, and it doesn't need to be across the board, but just, I think when there's a question mark over, do I do this or do I do that? Should I go this way or go that way? There'll be sensations happening that, as Natalie said, we we sometimes, I think, get so busy on autopilot, are just so tight fist, so with the list, so caught up in what we believe is expected and not really questioning what we're expecting of ourselves, that we just forget that actually I'm in a whole load of pain and my feet are dying, like metaphorically. And I, I can choose a different direction or I can certainly just try things out for a bit longer and find a better pair I don't want this to be shopping and shoe related but it just was such a great example to go oh my gosh that's so obvious and I bet if I took some time in other parts of my life when when a question came up or when I was debating if something's right or good or whatever my perception is of that next step then my body will definitely be telling me the answer we're just so busy being busy it's not it's not sustainable and yeah, we're taking it. I'm, I'm taking it really seriously. I'm like, but I must. <laughs> and then I can kind of hear my mum just going, Rach, in my day, like we saved for a house for 20 years and then bought one. Like that was what we did. And you're going, I'll have a house this year. I'll have a job. And it, when did that, what is going on with the world? So that was a very helpful, that conversation about shoes yesterday blew my mind. Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> um, I've uh, I just opened the chat. So if anyone has any questions or want to share um, what's going on for them as uh, as we're talking about this, that would be lovely. Yeah. We would absolutely love to hear um, hear your reflections and insights and anything you want to share on that. Um, I was going to say something and now I have missed it. Fill the gap a minute, Rachel, while I think. Not a problem. The thing I thought you were going to point to is that the other conversation we've had this week is um, that being in control is a good thing. So answering all these societal expectations and wearing the jeans to go out kind of gives us a feeling of, well, I'm in control because I'm adhering to these standards that I'm not necessarily questioning. And so that we thought that played into this as well. It kind of, especially it, the moment global climate as it is you know life as it is it's been a challenging 12 months in many ways but in many different ways for all of us and I wonder if this well I'll keep doing that because that makes sense to me because that was my default you know how society is run I'll do those things and I wonder well now that seems to be things are shifting whether it gives me a bit more headspace to to start to question some stuff but I mean Natalie and I discussed this we're not we're just taking baby steps towards um, just being aware of actually, do I need the genes as a, a very small example, or do I need to care what this person thinks? Yes or no. You know, it's a really interesting one to reflect on and think about, I think. Yeah. And it, it is still, you know, you keep seeing more, you see something and then you keep seeing more. Um, yeah. And I remembered what it was I was going to say, and it was linked, <laughs> linked to the, to the shoes. And it's almost like we, you know in terms of that the sensations and the feedback we in the instance of like pain although you know we 
we're like recognizing that and valuing we're, we're sort of seeing that as value well that that helps me make the decision but i think where then it, it, it any sensation meets the narrative that has something else to say on the matter that's when sometimes the the voice of our kind of egos is so compelling mm. and um you know and ultimately it wants to keep us safe so keeps us doing other 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 stuff yeah i think that this is really something around permission as well we, we give ourselves permission to um you know act differently maybe to ways we've acted before like even if we sort of like really feel oh i want to i want to do i want to do this this feels more freeing or, or or spacious but i've never done that before or people don't know me like that how will you know sort of like giving ourselves permission to let go of our own expectations let go of the expectations of others and, and actually Oh, go on. Go well, just embracing that we don't need to have expectations today or any day of ourselves or of anyone else. It's like, when did that become a thing as well? Um, I have no, ex we had a conversation again across the floor and it was like, actually, this is a very enjoyable space for us to be in because when we join our calls, nothing is expected of any of the other three. Nothing is expected. It is come as you are. You could be drunk, covered in snot, totally sane, flying on your A-game. It doesn't matter. It's like, come as you are and we will be here in this space. And that has been really um, inspirational, really, for a year. There's, there aren't many places, I think, where you can turn up like that. So this idea of letting ourselves go, I ima you know, imagine the possibility where so many more occasions in, your, in our lives could be like that, where nothing is expected or... Um, or certainly we're lowering the expectations on ourselves, not because we're rubbish or we can't do it, but just because we didn't need to have them in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love that. And we didn't need the permission in the first place as well. But it is beautiful. We Thank you for, um, got some things coming in the chat here. Um, Leah, um, the let, I've let myself go um, could be a statement of positivity and putting yes. a stake in the ground. I love that. Like I've let myself go by choosing comfort always, aspirational and also flipping the meaning, as you both so beautifully said. Oh, thank you. Jean Marie, it's fascinating the difference in the statements, let myself go and let go. Oh, isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's so good. It's like, um, yeah, that is so difficult because to let go, I automatically feel relaxed at ease in flow. You know, that's wonderful. Let myself go. It's like, oh, sorry. You know, I'm going to let myself go and put comfort first, but I'm still sorry about that. It still might be inconvenient that I don't have jeans on or whatever the exact, you know, that's so interesting. Yes. And I think both should be totally acceptable, but yeah, it has different, a different reaction. <laughs> Um, Emma saying, letting go, freeing yourself from societal constraints, identities, we have labelled ourselves shackles to conform. Exactly. Labels, I think, are, I think we talked about doing a talk on labels at some point. So limiting for all of us, as we know, and like just your, your example, Natalie, of perfectionism and perfectionist. And I thought it was me. Yes. Yeah. And it's not you. <laughs> and I used to say, I am a perfectionist. Yeah, yeah. Like it defined me. Yeah. Like, no, I I had a habit of perfectionism. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Let myself go, Jessica. For me, I think it's more than letting yourself go with wearing loose clothes and more let myself wear what I want and being comfortable, which actually sometimes is makeup and sometimes is work and smart clothes as I feel myself, but uh, as I feel myself, but a different version of me. And I like the different versions of me. Oh, yeah. And that's nice. Lovely. And it comes back to that, you know, seeking the motivations because when we know is this is what I want, this is what empowers me, this is what, this is how I'm aligning with me in this moment. Well, that's a very different feel, isn't it? You know, um, 
and and you would say argue at that point well that is that is if we're defining this letting myself go because it's linked to that that empowering ourselves with how we want to be it's like trust what you need and do what it's you do you it's that kind of mm. vibe we're so used to you do you but I'll just check with a couple of people first or or how will what will they perceive this as and will this be okay and it's actually yeah let's you just do you Thanks. yeah and I love the idea you know if more especially our younger generation you know were embracing you do you yeah. <laughs> embrace your own magic because you I just see too much similarity in in people as you know uh, young women but also young men aspiring to a certain look yeah. and the you know and then using uh photographic filters to try and you know um create this sort of unreal we're just kind of um setting ourselves up with you know more expectations this is what Emma's saying here. So we're asked at such a young age to start to define ourselves. Who will you be in this number of years? What do you want to be when you grow up? And actually, and you do that and you have answers to those questions, Emma's saying, as a means of survival and safety for your future self. And I wonder if, you know, we're not necessarily, and I certainly am not doing this with younger people I know, with my kids and others, but push um, talking about how this you do you and that, you know, you don't have to make decisions now or, or think about that stuff and it's okay to be different that, you know, it's okay to have different interests. And actually we just see time and time again, particularly across parents that we know that that's very difficult for the younger generation to kind of stand up and stand out. Um, and actually yeah. we should be really championing difference everywhere. Um, thank you, Anna. Yeah, I was just gonna raise, sorry, I was just gonna raise the younger generation. My youngest daughter is 10, 13 and the social media influence is now so massive on Lux. Yes. <sighs> yes, it's it's huge amounts of pressure. It's um, working quite a few schools and just the comments across the staff in terms of the impact and the um, importance that's placed on, I need to look a certain way, boys and girls. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't have an answer. Of course I don't, but I wonder how we start to distract um, all of us actually to spend less time on these platforms where so much of it is not a true representation. Um, and so much of it is, as Nassie said, is filtered and enhanced and it's not real, but it's um, hugely influential. And um, yeah, what are your thoughts, Natalie? Well, I just, you know, would really love um, it to become uncool to have social media before my eight year old is old enough. I mean, it's just, you know, it is it is something I think that requires some really deep look at um, how how we can support our younger people at such a, a young and influential age. Um, with this kind of technology. And I think the research seems to support um, the idea that it's not being supportive of, um, you know, young people's mental health. And, and that's, you know, and, and I know that there's some really good stuff being done with aspirational more aspirational kind of roles and more real roles but I think it's a long time coming till it can be something that is sort of so huge but yeah I would I would love the love there to be some some change um, and uh, I totally get the concern um, Polly with you know facing that and what to do for the best because you know you don't want your the young person in your life to be excluded from that kind of thing but at the same time you're you know I, th I think our best chance you know really when I think about it is to really um help the young people in our lives know that that their self-worth has nothing to do with the opinion opinions of others nothing to do with how they look and do all we can to help them understand their own inbuilt resilience um, 
and um but but that's not that's not not an easy thing and i don't know all the answers to that and it's something that i'm definitely thinking about myself it's fair and i think one of the conversations um we had there's quite a few books that we share across the four because we can't it doesn't make any sense for all four of us to read everything so now we're kind of taking it in turns and taking books each but one of the conversations we had was how do you um encourage younger people or any person to understand that their self-worth is valuable as is and one of the messages that came out of the book was when you sit with the person whoever they are and it doesn't need to be a relative or a son or, or anything um you sit and there are messages that we can give which are you know things like I enjoy being with you um I feel very lucky that you're sat next to me right now let's not go anywhere talk to me for a while what do you think about this and it's almost certainly for me and I know this is again a parent lens but it's you know so so often I'll be like have you done have you got how was that where's the homework and actually I forget that all of that doesn't need to happen all the time and just to teach that you are valuable just as you are without those results without that appearance without anything just as you are so the the message you know I sometimes now sometimes I'm really crap at most things sit with my kids and I'll be like you know it's really lovely to sit with you and therefore I'm hoping just to start planting more of these seeds because I don't think we do a good enough job of that we got some other things in the chat just because there's how um you do you but ask others first how often have I asked my friends and family what they're wearing etc uh when we go to certain events oh it must be like yes I mean you know this happens I do that guilty too. yeah <laughs> Emma says it actually yeah. plays into the safety of our society so the world can be sure it can continue if you stick to a path and conform but this definitely stifles creativity limits opportunity encourages the single path to success yeah because we are you know it's almost like the system is encouraging us to you know conform we get rewarded don't we by by I guess um or, or the illusion of reward i suppose um being in this um you know conforming to what i guess is the, are the social social norms around us i love um rebecca holtz i've always had such a high expectation put high expectations on myself and always under a lot of pressure i would love to let go more but it feels uncomfortable i know i need to which baby steps to start with i mean so lovely isn't it I think for I don't I don't know the answer obviously for you but what's been beautiful about this conversation is how all of our realizations and insights have been really tiny little um you know moments seeds being sown and then they'll lead to a big one but just letting go it, it depends what that looks like for you but I guess we've talked here about you know holidays and the expectation of hosting or what I expect my life to look like or materially what things should I be going after or from a parent view what should my kids be achieving and what should they look like and all of these things what's starting to happen is for me anyway and Natalie I don't know how you're finding this but just on a very regular basis relaxing more and more about all of those things and you know if I'm hosting somebody which obviously hasn't happened for a year but I'm not going to cook now I'm going to order something in that arrives ready done so I can just you know I'm not going to worry about the how clean my house is anymore I'm not going to you know so there's lots of things I'm just chilling out a lot more about and certainly that seems to be what's happening with me in terms of letting go what about you Natalie? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess similar. And then what I'd say, just coming from this place of <laughs> the high expectations and the pressure, I kind of recognise that in, in in how I used to be. And um, and I guess in terms of baby step, it was just, the, you know, there's a few times I just tried out doing it a different way, um, not preparing to the level I did and actually seeing, oh, you know, um, actually I survived and it went really well so um a lot of what I used to do is I used to spend time trying to anticipate what other people might say or how things might go and I used to try and work out all these eventualities so I was prepared for them all um I realized that future Natalie would just sort that out like you know that was a waste of time 
<laughs> so and that's been really helpful so you know i now saved me a lot of time yes i have a you know i i, I plan um but i'm not going to try and anticipate a future that i can't possibly know um but anyway back to the question rebecca i also invite you to just think about why is being uncomfortable problematic because I really think that there's some rich discoveries when we investigate why we put too much hold on being uncomfortable. It's really okay. It means um, that it's not a normal habit, uh, but it's, a, it's just because you're having a thought that that feels uncomfortable. You know, a, a thought uh, has prompted a feeling. It's like, well, that doesn't feel... <laughs> You know, but the more I see, the more I kind of see that my feelings of discomfort aren't telling me that I'm on the wrong track. If anything, my feelings of discomfort normally tell me that there's a learning to be had for me. It's like a growth opportunity. And so um, I know it's still tricky, but um, yeah, perhaps there's something in that for you. And it's also okay, like when you catch up with your people. I know I've got on a call with Natalie, and I'd be like, I just just want a day where I don't learn something. Like, I just don't want to learn that there's some other uncomfortable thing I need to experience to get the learning. Like, cheers, universe. So there is there is an element of the more we see, the more we're going to continue to see, right? Because you, we just become more aware. Like once I let go of that thing, oh, that's okay. You know, things didn't fall apart for Rach. Maybe there's something else I can um, grip less tightly lovely um emma's saying this is a lovely idea as well to focus on platforms um that use that don't use images as evidence so doing something like moving away from um the photographs and how we're how we're using social media moving towards language poems and words so it's encouraging you know the next generation to see things presented differently and it's not all about how the thing looks um i think that's a great mm. a great idea I don't know whether I'm missing people and I've got quite a few chats, but Sophie's saying I've been off Instagram for about a month and I've found that in itself very freeing. When I've gone back, instantly felt my mood drop and think this massively links to comparison to others for me. Yeah, the more time we spend with people who are off social media altogether, or certainly massively limiting how much time you spend on there, hugely, um, well, what I'm seeing, hugely beneficial for people and for me. Um, yeah, well done, Sophie. That sounds amazing. I, I think I'd also quite like to um, potentially <laughs> come off social media, Polly. I now feel I've reached the ripe old age of 47. Me too, snap. Um, I'm so much more comfortable with myself than I've ever been. Age definitely helps. I, 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 I think that's, this seems to be me my experience as well. It seems to be helping. Mm, Kristen agrees. Oh my God, yeah. we've got so much chat here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh my God, there's loads. Okay. Okay. So Glenn and Doyle's big shout out for Glenn Doyle always. Yes. If you haven't read the book, I mean, we definitely talk about it every week. Thank you for referencing it here, Emma. But yeah, I found this a really um, helpful, Emma's found it a really helpful account of somebody journey, somebody's journey with freeing themselves. Um, freeing, just reading it. And if others have done it, working on it, it can be possible for you too. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's, it's actually my favorite book of my entire life and I will be turning 40 in about two weeks time still representing the 30s for those of you who've been here from the beginning but I will be turning 40 yes big day um lovely thank you lovely comment from Sam um my son is transgender I'm very proud of him but people describe him as brave as he isn't conforming to what is expected by society Yeah. Well, carry on being proud and um, yeah, we have a long way to go still. We could do with letting go of these expectations and historical beliefs too, as there's no right or wrong, etc., with gender and so many other things in our world. So why did we stick to it? Thanks for sharing, Sam. That's lovely. Oh, I love Christmas. I let go of needing the house to be perfectly clean before guests come over years ago. And once my mother said, it's so nice that you don't feel like you need to clean before I come over. <laughs> 
at the time I thought it was a passive aggressive dig, but now I think she really meant it. Again, age makes a difference of how I react to things. So oh, I just think this is nice with all these little examples of um, letting go and our different discoveries. And, and, I, and I just love that you can tell by the chat, there's been quite a lot of um, thought provoked. And as Rachel and I says, we just genuinely, you know, um, this is an evolving conversation for us, but we're seeing more and more all the time. And we're not even sure, you know, where we are. If this was an analogy to kind of work towards, you know, where we are, I'm certainly not there. Uh, and, you know, whether I'd want to be, I'm not sure. But, um, but I love the idea of just challenging some of the things we do and just chucking out some of the stuff that doesn't suit us anymore and becoming free a little bit freer as a as a result and I wonder as well about you know you saying just not taking things so seriously I have vi images of this of this fist opening but like the wrong fingers popping up first and just I just think that it doesn't matter either does it but as we discover and fail and mess it up and do it wrong and there there's something really freeing and liberating to to come here tonight and go yeah this is what we're seeing and to hear from all of you guys that's yeah very special thank you for the chat hmm. i kind of feel like that's a very natural and lovely place to end um yeah our encouraging you know we would as natalie said continue to we will continue to look at it and question it and look at the motivation behind stuff and then hopefully as a group we can go out into our lives from this moment and just take it all a tiny bit less seriously and maybe work towards the open palm whatever that looks like for us all um but i will ask natalie to stop the recording and thank you all for being here tonight so that we can shout bye um and yeah pleasure as always to spend the hour with you <laughs>